Thank you for coming to the seminar today. Uh, today, Miguel Abuyas is going to present his work. Uh, she worked here in Medea uh, a few years ago, no? then, then in the year, and then now uh, he's coming back here and he's working with Marta Marcos and Angel Amores. And today uh, he's going to present a little part of uh, the thesis because he's finishing the, the PhD. And well, let's go with the talk. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about severe earthquake and other things. Uh, focus on the case of Balearic Island. This is part of my uh, my thesis that is separated in three main chapters. The title is uh, Coastal Hazard under Climate Change. The case of Padre Island. And today I focus on the chapter number two and chapter number three. But to sum up, uh, the chapters are three. And the first one is about how to estimate or calculate the wave run up. That is the vertical component of uh, sea level due to the waves when it reaches the coast. And how to calculate the uncertainties using different methodologies and, and compare with observation. And then uh, the chapter two had the objective to provide maps of coastal flooding uh, at a regional scale in Balearic Island. And uh, it has the methodology or the benchmark to use it uh, to calculate. Sorry, 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 sorry. Tira para atrás, tira para atrás. To calculate the same uh, coastal flooding by using uh, or considering the seabed, uh, the seagrass, uh, to, to, to see if the, the seagrass can reduce the wave energy. Um, just to before starting, just to emphasize the importance of coastal zone. Uh, here, as you all know, uh, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of structures, a lot of services, a lot of interactions. For instance, we have a, a commercial port that makes supplies and, and transport. We have submarine outputs. We have beaches and cliffs that protect us for, from from uh, uh, against a, a big a big storm. Sorry. And uh, it's very important to, to know the interaction between the ocean and coast because, for, some, for example, if we want to calculate or maintain or design a new submarine output, it's very important to know the currents behave and ways how they push the pipeline or, or how to know the vary the, the sea level. And also, it's very, very important to have a faithfully historical maritime climate in this. Uh, in these points or near shore to know uh, to know how to project or how it's going to change the shape of the beach or how to calculate new design of ports and um, and so on. So also it's very important to consider the global warming that is is gonna increase the missile right. So if, if we want to, to project the coastal building for under different scenarios, it will be even even more uh, important. So also we have uh, to consider marine storms that they lead to coastal impact. This is an example of the uh, Gloria in 2020 in January. And this is the Hurricane Katrina. And uh, so in our group, or in our, the physical oceanographers, we try to answer these kind of questions that is during events in, clima in, in present climate is changing or if they will change in the future, in terms of uh, intensity and frequency, or where they are going to chase more, and what's the role of climate change in these uh, in these in these things? So yeah, uh, now I'm going to show you a general concept to to go through the, the presentation on on cons basic concepts that we are used to to work, like for example, uh, what is onshore or offshore zones? That for example, onshore zone is where or the coastal zone where the, the waves are not still interacting with the seabed, so they are not changing at all. They just moving from deep waters to, to shallow waters. And then uh, till uh, this kind of, uh, this, uh, this part, or there is a relative uh, depth between the <coughs> high wave and the column water, that uh, the waves becomes to, to, to change a lot. And you have like a shoaling zone they break and then they try, they, they move 
from move up and down in this kind of in this zone that we call force. And if we do like a profile here, we we have kind of this kind of uh, drop. We have our house here. This is the the beach profile or whatever. And we uh, always want to to calculate or try to estimate the this this parameter is the total water level that we can obtain using these uh, assuming these components separately or uh, together. That is the mean sea level uh, due to the astronomical tide and the storm surge. And the storm surge is the variation of the sea level due to the big changes in pressure atmospheric and the winds. And then we have we have to consider also the um, the waves. So waves break here and then induce another extra sea level here that is called wave for now. Okay. So uh, in addition, if we want to consider or to project these uh, shoreline movements for the future under climate change, we need to consider the, the mean sea level rise. So uh, all of these uh, elevation will be even worse, and the coastal flood consequently will, will be more more risky. But this is the traditional methodology to obtain these uh, total water level. But here in, in Balearic Kazakhstan and other parts of the world, we have what is kind of this kind of vegetation or seabed. So we wanted to consider this vegetation part in the way for now because it could induce a reduction of this uh, calculation. So maybe the total water level is, is, uh, is kind of different. Then going to the chapter two, just a little bit about the methodology we developed here to go directly to the chapter three. I think it's more interesting for all of us. So here uh, we are um, located in the Balear Island, and uh, we work with uh, with waves, historical data, with voice and voice and and that to validate our simulations. And then our objective is to estimate the, the beach flooding. Sorry, under climate change, under, under climate change, uh, with two main objectives. The first one is to calculate the beach area loss in percentage under different climate changes, under different scenarios, sorry. And then if uh, to calculate or estimate the role of seagrass in coastal flooding. So the uh, the scan on the methodology is, is relatively simple. We, uh, we are, as we will see in the next slide, we will obtain here the total water level. And then uh, using the slope of the beach, we can estimate the retreat of, or the area loss of the beach. So here you have in the black contour is the, co is the current beach area and the, the colors are the future area in different scenarios. So the methodology, as I have said that, uh, first we need to obtain historical data of waves, uh, C11 and storm shoots, and future data of waves, C11 and storm shoots. So we can estimate the, the total water level in mean conditions or during extreme events. Uh, that is mean that this means uh, during winter or also you see in the Different scenarios like RCP 8.5, that is the, the representative of the business as usual, like uh, we have now. And just to let you know that these uh, blue points are the downscaling web that we did at uh, 200 meter resolution. And here we have the historical data of uh, sea level variability. Okay. So, uh, this is, these are some, some of the main results of the chapter two. Here we have the, the four islands. This is the beach flooded in percentage under the most pessimistic scenario by the end of the century uh, for winter conditions. Okay? So for instance, we see the Formentera Island, the white, uh, the white uh, dots are beaches that are, will be completely polluted under the extreme conditions. And uh, also main results, for example, here in this scenario, uh, beach loose 
Uh, at the end of the century, it will be um, almost half of, of the beach area in average. There are beaches that will lose just 10%. There are beaches that will be completely included. And, and this is the same, but in, in extreme conditions. And this is another kind of uh, of results that we can estimate the coastal coastline retreat in average by uh, uh, using the strong conditions would be more or less 20 meters in average, okay? <coughs> so here, Okay. I'm gonna show you this uh oh, can you, ah, okay. This is a, a visual online tool that uh, we developed using the, the data that we uh, that we did. And this is a kind of a plot map, and we can go or we can fly wherever you want, and you can click here or click here. For example, here, and you have the, the current area and the different areas that you will have uh, by the end of the century or in the middle of the century, depending on the mean condition or current conditions under different scenarios. Okay, so for example, if we go, I don't know, wherever, there are 869 points. This is uh, some bow, for example, and you have the same. Okay. Just to let you know uh, how I change this. She's got a PowerPoint. So this is the, the, the main part of my test, the, the part two. Then We start. We started to think about the seagrass, and in the middle of the of the PhD, we, we think that, that maybe this is important to calculate the total water level. So we started to think that, as you all know, there are seagrass everywhere. So uh, we uh, started to try to answer this question: Is two seagrass meadow reduce the energy of coastal waves? How much? So it consequently could reduce the flood uh, distance. So uh, another well, th this is a video, but I think I can go there. Yes. So uh, this is the moment. This is, there has been a lot of uh, a lot of numbers of laboratory experiments that that have estimated this uh, uh, wave reduction, but uh, there are mainly two two. Processes that can reduce the weight. So the first one is the is the movement of the of the lead. So can this interaction can reduce the the velocity of the of the weight in the profile. And also uh, there are another thing that when there are big storms, the the waves can uh, break these leaves in little pieces. So the pieces uh, start to flow, uh, float, and then the um, the water, uh, because more vis viscosity, there are more viscosities so on the water, weighs more. So the next, uh, the next waves that, that they have to pass through this new viscosity, they need more and more energy. So that, that's why they reduce the the energy uh, when they reach the coast. Uh, so this is the the first Okay. Okay. So here, just just one equation. I, I promise, <laughs> but I had to put that because it's very important for for my work. So mainly the the variation of the energy of waves coming to the to the, to the beach are uh, due to the, the the breaking part, but also the bottom friction. So here, Mendes and Losa, 2004, uh, they developed this, this equation. So we can add this equation to the numerical model to consider the, the extra dissipation. So um, to do that, we have everything, less this uh, damping coefficient or roundness coefficient that we need to, to, to calibrate in the model. So we have the loop length, 
So this is about 40, 80 centimeters, depends on the, on the season. We have the vegetation, uh, that is that, or, and we have the steam, steam weight that is two, two, two million, two centimeters old. So we need to calibrate this one using, uh, we decided to use this, uh, this model, it's called x -Bridge. We can put or add or add the uh, seagrass uh, wherever we want and uh, simulate the waves. So to calibrate the numerical model, we get it in two steps, two different steps. The first one is to uh, um, to obtain this CD parameter uh, using uh, observations from for for seven years in two different beaches. So when once we did that, we uh, validate using another experiment in another time, uh, comparing the uh, the high wave in the surface. So here, for example, you have experiment. Uh, this is the profile. This is the series located till five meters depth, and we have four four sensors, and these are the sensors. Uh, the this, this component is the observations, and this one is the is the numerical uh, result. So uh, the blue the blue points the blue dots are, are using vegetation, and the black is without using the vegetation. So as you can see, it's more approximated by, in terms of uh, what it means for. Uh, okay. Having said that, um, we have the numerical model calibrated. And we can make some simulations and we can see how much the waves are using by uh, using these or considering these this series, this CB, CB, sorry. So here we have, for example, uh, three different seagrass distribution till two meters left, till five meters left, or without seagrass. And here we have a 2D simulation. Uh, this is the beach of Calamillo. And we put just to just to know we put zeros here and two numerical sensor here, and you can see the surface hey moving along the time and see the difference. So here the black line sorry, is the short line, and this is the the invasion, the truly sorry. Okay. So now we have the numerical model calibrated and we now. Uh, how we characterize the zero meters along all the Valeria Gasm. So it's a tricky question because first we started doing kind of uh, automatically algorithm using uh, programming. But uh, at the very beginning, was I was very happy doing that. But then after one week of programming, it was not so easy. So uh, yeah, because <coughs> The, these these images uh, weigh a lot. There there are huge huge uh, gigabytes, and you need to have images that with uh, huge contrast between CRS and uh, sun. So it's, it was not so easy. So it it started to become another uh, PhD. So <laughs> we didn't um, we rejected that and we step back and then we think about. Which kind of data we need to to put it in the, in the numerical model and obtain the different uh, cost of loading. So the first thing was to use satellite data, satellite images again, but just 250 images, just in, in four different zones. Here, before, uh, since um, since the last uh, 70 years. So what we did here is to uh, identify. The shallow wave depth, you know, matches to know if there is a retreat of the or, or variation of the coastal of the sea rest from. And the other thing is to uh, uh, use the field, field observations in 16 different sites, these green, these green points, uh, to evaluate the shoot depth because we did a lot of tests and shoot depth is important for the American models. So the first um, data was the series was the cell was there, and you can see here an orthopoto in 1956 and an orthopoto in uh, 2008, and you see the the green line is the bones of the series. Okay, so we did this for uh, a lot of 
pictures in the four different sites, and we uh, intercept or we put the bathymetry uh, over the slides to obtain the um, to obtain the um, the representative depth for each picture and the variability along the along the along the line. And those are these are the results for Playa del Palma, Canamillo, Playa del Cubia, and Simbu. So uh, you can see a slightly retreat of the depth in Playa del Palma from seven meters and a half to eight now. But uh, in average or in general, uh, we could say that the shallow depths remain practically constant, constant over time. So so this is a kind of result for us. And, uh, but uh, however, in, con in contrast, the, the, sh the shoot density is very, uh, there, there is a, there is a, a clear degradation here. So we separate the, the data from shoot density above 10 meters depth and below 10 meters depth. And we saw that uh, there is a clear degradation Density below 10 meters depth, but also in, in the surface or in the shallow depths, you have 8.8 .8 shoots per square meter per year, losing every year. So, as we don't know the, we still don't know the thermal limit or what, when they are going to collapse. Uh, it's not clear. There are a lot of people studying that right now. So we need to, to consider or work with future scenarios depending on shoot density uh, degradation. So now I'm gonna show you the scenarios that we have decided to work on. Uh, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna go really slow just you know, to keep on me to explain that. So uh, we did uh, two different times for the present and for the future and for the present, we have, imagine that we have the, the sea level like we know right now, and this is the, the serious distributions and we have right now. So what if uh, we take out of the serious? So we have these two scenarios. And then uh, if we add the mean level rise for future scenarios, we have another three scenarios that are, this, this is the same that, like this, but putting more mean level rise. And this is with a low uh, degradation or passing from 600 uh, meters uh, shoot density to, to 200. And without, this is the most pessimistic scenarios. Imagine that you are, are, are going to have more, more sea level rise and you will lose all the, all, all the, all the sea rise. So we did this for beaches and also for brake pressures uh, because this is just a scheme of what would be if we have or not have the, the zeros here. And yeah, and, and this is, these are the results. For what's the role of CRS in present climate? I mean, uh, what's the role of CRS if we take out everything and how was the, how would be the total water level? So those are the results. This is an increase of total water level along the four islands uh, during extreme events. So that means that in average, we uh, have an increase of 70 centimeters, ranging from two, 20 centimeters to one meter and a half, if we remove all the zero right now. There's some sort of um, and then these are the these are the results the results sorry <clears throat> uh, along the century. So this black line is the stream total water level in average along the four island uh, from the present to the to, by the uh, to the end of the of the century. So we are here with the sea level like we know right now with these uh, sewers. And we put, we add this extra mean sea level right due to the climate change and we remove all the sea right. So this is the increase of total water level uh, due to uh, both, uh, both uh, components. The 46% of this uh, value comes from the mean sea level right and more than 50% of 
This value comes from the loss or the fact of losing zeros. Okay. If we consider a, a moderate a scenario, that means uh, we have zeros and we will have zeros, but with a, a medium revaluation. This, these are the results: one meter of strength uh, in strength to water level, and now the micellar rise are are waning, are waning weight. Uh, in contrast, the loose or the fact of this uh, or lost seagrass will be around the forty percent. And if we are uh, good workers and we have a conservative uh, coastal management and no nature based solutions and whatever, we will have just the increase of of uh, mean sea level rise, and this is this is the the average mean sea level rise that will be in, by the end of the century in average. So, oh, everything is is due to the mean sea level rise, and nothing about the, the loss of zeros, obviously. And it's worth to say that in we did it uh, separately from beaches and and dikes, and nowadays uh, beaches. In be on beaches, uh, the contribution of seagrass to reduce the strength of the water level is about 40%. That means that if we have a one meter of uh, fluid elevation, this 40% uh, uh, is reduced. We will we, have at the end 60 centimeters because the, the other 40 centimeters are, are reduced by the, by the seagrass. Okay. And in ports, uh, the contribution of seagrass is less important than on beaches because uh, because the ports are have a different uh, distribution. They are not so uh, what do you say? <laughs> they have no this slope, but they have they have more water column here. So the relative uh, depth is less important. So when when there are big waves here. There are uh, less uh, interaction with the series here because you have at least four or five meters of column water of water column here. Okay. And then, 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 I think this is our, yeah. Now, just to finish, I don't know how many times, but some conclusions series uh, are provided against extreme conditions. Uh, losing series. Uh, located near coast implies extra flooding, and satellite images are uh, not so sure clear with the resistance, but we have to we have to to see working on that. I think in the future. Uh, yeah, final observation of should this be reversed uh, clearly a clear degradation overall below two meters depth, and future of seagrass is still not clear. The term limit is. Uh, is still to be continued to uh, urge that because it's very important to know the, the future of, of this uh, marine life. And future steps uh, to contrast and compare marine heat waves with seagrass deaths uh, in terms of duration, intensity. I mean, I would like to continue working in coastal planning, learning more about nature based solutions because I think it's, uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good way to go. Um, and provide both through the maps, but uh, in our Europe uh, region, uh, using different segments of the base. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's done. And thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, if anyone has any questions before years, <laughs> I'm <sorry. laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was very, I mean, it's not my topic, but it's very interesting. Uh, so, in your last slides, uh, you have like the different scenario. Which one do you assume that from the present to the future, the degradation of the seagrass is proportional? I mean, so you have the state right now, the state in the future, but so in between, is it dynamic that you assume? I mean, you don't know when you will lose this proportion of, of seagrasses, right? Yeah. So, do you assume that it's proportional every year or like, yeah. um, okay. so not yeah. like, for example, if you have a really extreme event in 2020 and then almost yeah. all the seagrasses go. So you have the starting point, the end point, but not 
how is this big, right? We can reach these differences in the contribution, maybe at the beginning, so you don't really know when this will happen, right? Yeah, we don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's because of the thermal limit. It's, uh, we don't know when the blacks are going to die and not survive again. So we so, don't know if the summer of, or 10 years next or forward, we will have a great collapse or it will be 20 years later or I don't know. So that's why we, we have to work with uh, scenarios because everyone says, or in the bibliography you said, you, you, you can read that 28 degrees could be the maximum, but you need to know the, the duration of this temperature um, and other biological interactions. So now it's a little bit complicated. Last summer, Will be a, a huge temperature here in Mallorca, and now we are going to see if these deaths are going to you know, recover again. What's the plasticity or the you know the versatility of these plants? Uh, maybe they can adapt for the future conditions. Yeah, that's, we, we, that's why we we need to assume that uh, here we have these uh, these plants now that we know, but maybe in the future we will have we will not. But in the middle, we don't know when I'm going to death or, or if I'm going to death. So, yeah, it's yeah, we do something similar also with birds, like the western stuff, and I know that yeah. maybe for animals it's more yeah. developed. But I was also thinking, like, yeah, in my mind, I was not remembering that it's only based on the thermal. Maybe I thought it is if there is a stream event, like a storm, something that kills, not only because of the temperature of the sea and the effect on the sea grasses, but also. There's a storm and then remove all the seagrasses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, think it, I was thinking more on extreme events, also removing the seagrasses, not because of the the increase of temperature. So yeah, so these yeah. these more, these scenarios are based on the thermal limit of the. Yeah. Well, the thermal limit is based on on the short density degradation that we have uh, assessed before with field observation for the last two years. So here you have the um, this uh, degradation. So you can estimate if you have six six hundred shoots square meters per uh, six hundred uh, shoots uh, per per meter square, uh, and you are losing eight or ten per year, you will have mm -hmm. I don't know two hundred or uh, not even half. Or, or, okay. But, yeah, so cool. yeah, no, but I think that. <laughs> the, the main the main objective of this work is to emphasize the, to put uh, to, to put in, in, in for importance of the zero to uh, estimate the total water level because traditionally we we assume that we have sun or we have rocks but uh, there are another plants that uh, we are all around that uh, plays a role mm -hmm. to estimate that. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, <laughs> when you when you consider the the effect of hard sea uh, you only consider the effect of one species, or I guess the Pseudonym Planica, maybe the this is for the Pseudonym Planica, yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is a question that we put in the, in the model. So um, you can put uh, Posidonia Theonica, you can put also Simothea Maldosa, you can put, uh, uh, I think, another plant, um, and you can vary the left shoot and the vegetation density and the diameter. So you can put a plant that have different uh, um, geometries. And also you can put a plant that have different geometries in different layers, for example, the the mangrove, mangrove, mangroves. You have a, a, a tall plant that the density is different in different layers, so you can consider it useful. But it, if you more the more information you put to the model, the more complicated it is to interpret it and to calibrate it. Yeah, I think you mentioned that. The, when there's a big storm, breaks the seagrass, then viscosity increases. Can you, can you 
Yeah, imagine that you have a uh, you have um, car conditions summer day or and you have sewers and up you have the uh, water salad water salad water uh, summer one and a big storm comes and it takes uh, I don't know, six hours or twelve hours and the big waves uh, breaks and breaks the seabed and creates these uh, filaments or little pieces of sleeves of the this coming from the sewers. And it mixed together, so you don't have uh, just solid water. You have solid water with this uh, uh, little little species. So it's way more <laughs> the density and the viscosity is, is is moving, is changing. Is it the density or is it also viscosity? I think both. I think depends on, on the on the on the so on the size of the so if there is any data on this or any no no this is complicated but I think it's an, another future project yeah 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 we have to do observation in different places with zeros and not zeros in the same experiment the same pitch to compare really what's the role of this because we here compare the if we have zeros or we have just sun, or we have just rock, but maybe you have something that's in the middle. Yes, for, for instance, uh, regarding to that, there is a beach in, in Pavera, in, you know Pavera? Well, that beach has uh, the, the left side, you have zeros, and the right side, you have zeros. All the circles go into the left side, because the right side is, is producing the energy, so you have no energy to put you. And you see, you, you go out and you are with all these phenomena, with all these plants. This one is common, and for the new wave, wave equation, uh, the bottom fraction you take this into account because the bottom fraction is as it is. So you take this into account and what different kind of storm, different ways that you can be under the moon. The break of the leaves, I have no, no. This model doesn't calculate that. Yeah. But then, it has an extra friction, that's all. You need another model like for solving the complete equation of magnetic flux and then go to the two arm and whatever. But as you read, it would be uh, that significant to take it into account compared to what you have in now. Maybe, maybe. Maybe <laughs> 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 solid cylinders. So, do you think that taking into account, I know that you cannot solve in this model, but taking into account the movement of the blades will have a different results? The movement of the blades, of the leaves of the. How do you consider that in the model? You cannot do this. You have to use it, you say, yeah. Uh, the, the yeah. Well, the point is that we calibrate the model based on observations, and uh, this is, I will, I will show you the calibration. I think it's in, at the end of the everything, <laughs> in the natural lights. This is an experiment in Bahia, Bahia Cuya. And we wanted to know, I, I'm going to show, I'm going to answer you. We wanted to know if there is any difference if the result is uh, all the same, or the same form, or there is like uh, these veins, you know. So you you can see here the increase of the uh, pitch flooding. This is about uh, nine meters. Compare 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 this green path seagrass middle with this uh, a lot of coral. This of the, so uh, yeah, with it also you can do this. Also, but I don't know biological if you can control this 
way of death, or this is naturally, or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, I don't have the calibration. But, well, we compared the uh, swarms from camera from the swarms of the American model, and we will remove it the damping coefficient. I don't know how to, to, to do that, but uh, maybe we can do an experiment in the car in the channel. So, for you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I was wondering if there is an impact of seasonality, um, like in winter or the summer, the length of the leaf won't be the same. So, is that still as powerful as a protection for the coast in the same evidence? Obviously, yes. Yeah, obviously, it's not the same if the, the leaf is 20 centimeters or if 35. In this equation, you have the. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm going in circles or no, no, no. Oh. yeah. Here you have this uh, alpha H is the relative depth of the plant uh, with the column, water column. So it's it's pleasurable. And for example, if, if, if there's an extreme event in winter, does it mean that um, there will be more chances that um, like in winter the coast are uh, less protected by the seagrass. Yeah, yes. that it is in short because uh, comparing the same stream event in summer and we, yeah. yes, for example, if, if, if it happens in summer, it will be more uh, but dark. Okay. So the next question, like extreme events uh, happen more in winter or in summer, or it's not known? <laughs> extreme events is, um, is, is like when, you, when you have a series of, of historical data on waves, the big waves are coming in winter here. But there, there are another parts of the world that come in summer also. The tropical cyclones, like here in, in Mallorca, and you have in the north, the Gulf, of, uh, in the south of France, you have the, uh, the storms coming from the north, or the straight, the particular dark straight, you have the waves coming from the south. But everything is happening in the winter. A few more, a few, um, a few ones will be happening. Uh, just like it about the temperature um, yeah, I think this the other one, like uh, the distribution of the this like the um, situation. Yeah, this one. I mean because generally the temperature is about the uh, loss of the sand beaches, right? But the Balearic Islands only have 10% of 10 meters, right? Yeah. So, like all the points are very remote to get in. Like, I don't really see how you combine that. Like, in France, of course, if you don't have a sandy beach, then actually you don't get a result because then I combine post there where there is no sandy beach for the later of the sandy beach. Yeah, you mean that there are bits with trouble, with trouble. Yeah. With more big particles. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering, like, why you're getting better for saying which way that helps. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we have uh, different hypotheses for simplification. First is that uh, there are pieces that are artificial and others that are natural. So they don't recover at the same way if, against an extreme event. And we have considered just a bad half approximation. It's like if you have a picture of Tibet and the and the syllable too. But it's not this is not real because the, the beach you know, the beach is also moving. And another point is that uh, we consider uh, beach profiles, beach equilibrium profiles. So if you can obtain a profile of the beach using a combination of the grind size 
and the near shore maritime community. So we did that. Our, I know that everything is not sandy beaches, but we have considered this beach profile depending on the, the ground size. So it's, it's almost impossible to have the real bathymetry of all the beaches. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Also, another question that is not regarding this objective for again, because you were saying that you look at the different things with the dikes and without dikes, right? You were also looking at dikes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe you say something about that. Like, because I haven't seen any dikes at Mallorca, but it would be more like uh, uh, you're assuming that there are going to be more dikes, or and also the implementation, I could imagine that there are quite hard to. The uh, was kind of way of quite rough and quite high, so I don't really see where the lights could be implemented if you're actually calculating the lights. Yeah, well, in fact, there are 54 bots in yeah, 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 yeah. We calculate that uh, in that bots. So, yeah. for example, I, I know, yeah, I put this as like <laughs> uh, I mean. Look, look at this, this is this, the range of the beach provide and these are uh, the real symmetry. So we can assume that depending on the brand size, uh, we adopt this uh, profile for this one, depending on the interaction between the initial wave female and the brand size. So, okay. and, uh, and you have here the, the configuration of this. So we, we did a kind of reconstruction of everything. I didn't want to explain that because I'm a bit tricky. But here, for example, you can you have here a, a board. So we consider here the the to calculate the wave the wave run up here, and you, you need to do it uh, differently than on beaches because you have a dike. And the waves are, are going up. So the, to calculate that, it's, 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 you have to do it differently. That's why we consider separately the beaches and in the ports. Okay. And those are the extreme events. Yeah, you, you need to put a threshold and over that. You have to <laughs> but maybe somebody else can also answer the question. But uh, like, um, do you know if there are any like solutions to uh, establish the like the uh, the Posidonia? Because that would be the next step, right? To so try to recover. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, but maybe, that's why I'm saying maybe, maybe that's not a working group here anyway. You know, like we're very logical and working. I think yeah? there are. More people here will be in that. <laughs> <laughs> but this obvious that we need to concern about. Yeah. It, it's not worth just in biology yeah. campaigns, but like, it works in physical. I know, like, I, I've seen some people are heard about people like trying to in situ grow uh, some like, yeah. plants and bring them actually into the beach. So I was yeah. wondering if there's actually a attempt or something like that. So, you know, we have in the North Mallorca in Valencia Bay. We have uh, two stars in foundation of fragments that were extracted from meadows by storms and things like that. And we planted them, and now we are, we are monitoring how they are surviving, how everything's working. But I think, like for the moment, I don't know, Macedonia grows very slow and everything takes lots of time. So. I think for the moment it's only experimental and not really uh, like mm -hmm. um, viable solution. Yeah, and I don't know if there's any other way to protect, but the um, replantation and all these kind of techniques, I think they are good to test and to see what can be done. But for the moment, it's not so easy. It takes a lot of time, money, and Mm, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. The, the problem is that we, we don't know if, uh, exactly if you it's better to, to, to grow that in a shelter child, child by it or, or which uh, column water you need to 
to put it on uh, over a rock, over a sand, uh, and uh, the best substrate. And uh, from what I know, is like the dead Posidonia map. Mm -hmm. This is the best substrate that, at least in the Mediterranean, they have tested in rocks and in sand and over the Posidonia is looking better. Yeah. At, but it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the rate of growth is less than the next the next storm, you will not have the seedlings to, to grow. You need to consider many, many things. That's why maybe in substitute with another plant or many plant like Timo Rosa. Yeah, that's it. It's growing faster, but yeah. at the same time, I think its protection level to the coast is not so high, so I don't know. Okay. I get two questions. Okay. I get two questions. First, uh, let's say about the track condition you have there uh, that we can actually. And I would assume that, I, I mean, I understand that you basically can be just comparing the, the model with the, a few data. But uh, your equation, I, I guess, well, the equation from, from the lean, I just uh, uh, considers, I guess, the, the characteristics of the leaves, the shoots. Uh, that's it. No, but, but not the structure, because uh, what Posidonia does is actually has two effects. One is, is that it builds reef, so it builds a three dimensional pattern, which actually has I mean, a, a great influence. I would assume that it has a great influence over, over the, the, the drug condition. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have a, a, the effect of the leaves. So if you calibrate that equation uh, from field data, you are taking into account uh, both both effects, and you don't overestimate the effect of the leaves. You understand what I mean? I... Yes. Uh, what you are actually measuring no. in, in, in the field is not just the effect of the leaves; it's the effects of the leaves plus the three-dimensional uh, structure that the uh, Posidonia has at the location you are uh, studying. Well, I should, should I mean, it depends. We, to calibrate the model, we have to uh, consider the length of the leaves, the shoot density, and the diameter of the length of the stem. But not reef. No, right. Um, yes, yeah, so that's why uh, I would understand that. I would assume that your calibration is valid, but for, for the place where you may be, but I don't know to which point. And you, when you, uh, if you compare that that calibration to other areas, if that is comparable. Okay. Well, we did it in two different regions in Alameda and Alabama, and then we validated in another beach. Another firm. Yeah, but it is but it the same calibration. It's the same coefficient. The coefficient, yes, the coefficient. The, the the good point is that the coefficient you don't need to, to change it, but you change the the geometry of the plant, and the results are are even uh, getting good. But I, I, I know that I mean, it's not so easy. The, the second question is just, yes, uh, I know how you did it. It's just this comparison between the profiles and uh, with Posidonia and with no Posidonia. Those are similarities. Uh, I would think that when you compare that, you cannot compare with the same profile. Because if you don't have Posidonia, uh, the same thing would adapt to, you'll have a new beach profile actually, that will be more dissipative because you don't have. So I would I would assume that the comparison has to be with different profiles. Yeah, sure. But I don't know as as soon as as, as soon as I, as I know I I don't know how would be the new profile to removing the Posidonia how how long it takes to but uh, it's, it's it's true. Yeah, you need to consider that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So beers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.